Hey Baker Art friends, it's Mrs. Herbe. I wanted to tell you about something exciting that happens in the month of December and it is called the Audubon Christmas Bird Count. And you guys might say, well what on earth is that Mrs. Herbe? And it's a um, it's a citizen science project where um, people um, in their um, citizens around the world um, in their communities and where they live um, go out on Christmas Day or at a time sort of give or take around that time and they go out and they count the birds um, in the area where they live and they document it and then they turn it into an organization called the National Audubon Society and you might say well why do, why is that important why do people do that and it's important for a number of reasons one is that um, they can take the Audubon Society can take all this data and then they can use it to determine how climate change is affecting the bird population around the world or um, what species of birds might be in trouble where there aren't as many of those birds um, being seen anymore um, or also what areas um, need some conservation help so it's a really cool thing and so I thought that it would be fun if we also did sort of we thought about the birds in the month of December in our ba own backyards and around our school and if we did our own kind of bird count and what's going to happen is that each grade level is going to do in our project that is focused around um, in, in different medium but focused around the birds that we can find here in Pennsylvania. So without further ado, I wanted to show you guys this poster and it has a lot of the backyard birds that can be found in Pennsylvania. And a lot of them you may recognize um, common ones such as the American Robin or the American Crow or the Blue Jay or the Cardinal. Um, I don't know if you guys, um, you probably recognize the Dove, Morning Dove and some of the sparrows um, that are on this poster um, but maybe some of the other birds you're not quite as familiar with so we're going to take a look at some photos of those um, in this powerpoint and i've also included at the end of the powerpoint a number of different species of owls that also can be found in pennsylvania although owls are um, a lot trickier to spot and to find and you guys are going to listen to a book uh, called Counting Birds and the author of that book talks about um, what is what is needed when you go out and try to find or count owls in your area. It's a little bit tricky. Um, but I've also included those as well um, that you may want to um, draw and include as part of your artwork. So the first type of birds that we're going well before we do that what I want us to do is I want us to think about if we were going to sit down and draw a bird what do we what are some things that we need to think about and the first thing we need to think about is the shape of the bird's body and a lot of um, when you draw a bird once you kind of study birds you kind of start to find a common theme to the shape of the body and we're going to um, discover that as we look at some different photos of birds um, the same would be for the head shape and also the wing and the tail shape and the beak shape. Um, birds also have feathers, but they don't have all the same type of feathers. Um, they have larger feathers and they also have smaller feathers. And so when we think about drawing the different feathers, we would use different types of lines to represent the different types of feathers. Birds also have unique feet. Um, their feet are often very um, delicate and they have little sort of sharp claws on the end of them that allow them to kind of grasp onto the branches. And last but not least, um, we need to also think about the markings on the birds because a lot of birds, um, the markings or their color is what also helps us to recognize them um, for what they are. So the first type or the first kinds of birds that we're going to look at have uh, maybe more rounded and um, wider sort of, I don't want to say, they're a little bit um, chunkier like of a body where it's short and wide 
and round. And so this first bird is called a black capped chickadee. And we can kind of see why because the top of the bird's head looks like it has a black cap on the top of it. And also when we look at this bird, we can kind of see that the the shape of the the pretty much the entire body is sort of like a half um sort of like a half circle with sort of just a curve taken out of this one end. So if we drew a half circle and then just rounded this corner, we pretty much have the bird's body shape. And then if we drew sort of like a teardrop or a raindrop, upside down raindrop shape here for the wing, um, and then the, the beak is just a little triangle. Um, I also want us to notice that if we were drawing the bird's feathers here, these um, feathers here are a little bit bigger of curved lines here to draw these feathers and then these are sort of some long curved lines but then this bird has a lot of little downy feathers and if we were if we were drawing the feathers here we would probably use lots of little um, lines kind of going in the direction that they are and then over here the lines would kind of go a little bit to the side like this and then here the lines would sort of be short and they would sort of tilt, come up and around and go back like that. So that is the black cat chickadee. Here are some, um, and then I'm going to show you the black cat chickadee um, if we thought about it in terms of shapes. And if I was going to just draw the shapes for this bird, here is the sort of the, the half oval or the, um, almost like a boat, if we were drawing a simple boat shape um, tilted and then here is the circle for the head and then triangle for the beak. I also had drew um, some, I drew red with a red line to kind of outline also the shape of the bird um, as I, earlier as I was talking to you guys about. It's sort of like this boat shape and then sort of the circle shape is sort of lost inside of that shape. And then here is our, our wing shape. So that's another um, strategy or way you can think about drawing this type of bird. Um, the American goldfinch is also um, a similar bird um, with the wider um, body. And I also drew the shapes for this where here is the sort of that, that half oval or half circle shape here's the circle for the head triangle for the beak and then this um if we just drew this one long sort of um raindrop or teardrop on its side it kind of encompasses the the wing which kind of maybe ends here and then also the tail um, so if you're just thinking about it in simple in simple terms that's sort of a quick an easy way that you could draw this bird. Song sparrow is another bird that has a similar body shape to the other birds that we talked about. Um, and then what I did here was I drew some of the feathers and if we were drawing the feathers here these would be sort of some some longer curve lines and these would be really long curve lines uh, here and then again this is like the little short downy feathers that we would draw kind of in the direction that we see them going. Here's another interesting little bird. This is called a Carolina wren. It also has the same type of body shape um, as sort of that first chickadee that we looked at. Um, we could even just draw, like I said, just that half um, oval shape and then just round off that one corner and you've got the basic shape of this bird and then we have here the teardrop shape for the wing and then we have um, sort of the shape here for the tail also i drew the the some lines on here for this bird's feathers and how they are just sort of the letter u some are bigger u long and skinnier u's and some are shorter um, use just to kind of see the bigger feathers here and then we have all these little um, shorter feathers here on the front part of the bird. The white-throated sparrow is also 
um, a bird that also would be drawn with a similar strategy and we can see why it's called a white-throated sparrow because it has this little tuft of feathers right where its throat is but it also has some interesting markings on its forehead it has sort of the black stripe a thin white stripe a black stripe and then the yellow and the white kind of going around its eye um, which help us to recognize it um, and then this is called a house sparrow these are sparrows that um, are very common i know um, the neighbor that lives next to us has a vent in the side of their house and there's a whole family of sparrows that always like to live in that vent and i recognize this sparrow as one of those types of sparrows and it also would be drawn using the same strategy the way the bird is sitting we can really kind of see this cir circular head that would be sitting on top of the the sort of the boat shape body a dark-eyed junco that's the type of bird that i didn't really hear about but um, again it would have the same type of um, shapes as the other birds we talked about as well as the eastern bluebird which is really pretty with its blue markings um, and colors and then sort of the orangish uh, sort of the light orangish color with the blue and it looks nice together because if you remember um, our color theory blue and orange are complementary colors so they look really nice together this is called a white breasted nuthatch and it also has a similar body shape and strategy as the other birds, but if we notice, its beak is a lot longer and thinner than some of the other birds that we were just looking at. Um, this is a tufted titmouse, and we can see why it's called tufted, because it has this little tuft of hair uh, or feathers on the top of its head, and we could sort of do that by putting a triangle on top of the circle that we would draw for the head. This is another angle or um, pose of a tufted titmouse. And then from this point on, the birds that we are going to be looking at have a little bit of a different body shape than the other birds. Their bodies are a little bit more, they're a little bit longer and a little bit narrower than the other birds, but we would be using sort of the same type of shapes. And I have here on this robin, we just see how the body shape is a little bit more elongated and a little bit thinner. And here's the head and the beak. And then for the, the this wing, we can just sort of use a smaller, um, this is another shape that you could use um, for a wing. And then here is the tail feather shape. I also um, drew lines if you were going to add these details this, these would be added after you drew the bird and the body and the head and, and the tail. But I sort of showed you kind of how the type of lines that you would draw to make, these are the larger wing feathers. And then these feathers would be sort of lots of little small lines here. Um, this is a red winged blackbird. It's going to have um, all the birds from this point on have similar body shapes to the robin. It's a blue jay. These are called brown-headed cowbirds. It's a cardinal. Another type. Um, this cardinal is a little bit um, beefier than the other one. This is a female cardinal. Female cardinals are um, a different color than the males. They are lighter, sort of a light tan with little markings of of or or an orangish red color this is a crow we are all familiar with crows this is called a european starling it has a lot of really interesting kind of feathers and markings on it with the little white dots here's a um a different um just a different picture of a european starling and this is called a common grackle. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but it's almost like their feathers are, they're, they almost appear black, but then they sort of have this iridescent coloring on them, which makes them look kind of cool. Here's another one. This is a hawk. I know at times during, over the years living in my house, we've had um, a hawk who has been in the neighborhood, but I have not seen him lately. Um, and they like to hunt small 
animals like bunnies and squirrels and rabbits and baby rabbits and all kinds of things. Um, and then we hear woodpeckers um, a lot. This is called a hairy woodpecker. And then here's a different um, one. This is called a house finch, a purple finch, which is more of a reddish purple color. This is a red bellied woodpecker. So I don't, the belly is not red. The top of the head is red, but that's the name of this red woodpecker. Here's another one. This is called a downy woodpecker. And it's a little bit smaller, but it has similar markings as the other ones. You've all probably seen these morning doves flying around in your areas, but they're just kind of just a gray color. And then I got, I've gone on to include some more um, owls that you can check out as well. Um, so this is the end of the slideshow. And so this week, I want you to kind of go back and find go through the photos and find an owl or a bird um, that you find a number of them that you like or or enjoy that you might want to be that you might want to pursue further um, as we move forward thinking about um, the project that we are going to make with a particular bird that you choose um, and use some of the strategies that I talked about and um, and then we will go from there.